guys. I told you I was going to share my power pack. And now I'm going to do it. So um, let's start breaking it down, and you can see the guts that's in this thing. All right, here we go. So this is a, this is the breakdown. My main switches. I have my two USB ports. I've showed you these previously, where they those light up, and I have a 12 volt, just a regular car port here in the front. I also have my 110 ports out the front. These are GFI protected. So now I'm going to turn to the side. I put in uh, fans. Uh, these, these fans run off of the thermostat, which is inside. I'll show you how that works in a bit. This is kind of handy because these have these little handles on both sides of the lid, which I can, it's stackable, so I can get like a toolbox, another small toolbox that sits on top that I can hold all like my wires and things for my solar charging. So that's kind of nice and it locks that down and locks it in place so it makes it one unit. Um, but really on this side all I want to show you is the fact that I have a fan. The other side has a fan as well. I probably won't show it to you just because it's just the same. There's just a fan. But you can see I do have a lot of room for adding future ports down here on the bottom. So I can add in Anderson connectors or any sort of uh, plugs, connectors I want to put in. Okay, now I'm going to run around to the back and show you the back. So here's the back. Again, not a lot to show you other than the fact that I have room for more ports. I do have my 110 outlet over here, which is switchable. This ties into my charging because I'm currently only charging with 110. I'm going to go to solar eventually, but right now it's just 110. Power cords inside. I will actually fire it up and show you the charging uh, tonight. So right now we'll just, uh, I just want to show you that this is where the port's at. Not much else to see, so let's get inside. Now it's time to break it down. Let's open this thing up and take a look inside. All right, here we go. That's with the lid off. All right, looking down inside, you guys can see just a mess. No, there's a lot of stuff going on here. All right, over here, let's start on this side and we'll work our way around. Um, the cell packs are on the bottom, running uh, 240 18650 cells. There's three separate packs of uh, about 80 cells each that allows for basically 12 volts. Nominal voltage is actually 11.1. .1. I've thought about maybe changing that up. Um, but we'll see. But right now it seems to be working really well, just um, at a nominal 11.1 .1 with a max charge of 12 volts. So starting here, this is a 150 amp breaker. So I put in a breaker switch, which is tied directly to my cells. Now this is a manual breaker, and the reason I chose a breaker versus a fuse is so that if I'm out, you know, using this while camping or somewhere else. And if I had a fuse in here, in this blue, I would be without power. I'd have all this juice, but I wouldn't be able to use it unless I rewired all this. And I wouldn't want to do that without having proper protection. So this 150 amp breaker allows me to be able to reset it. If there's something that happens, I, I can reset this uh, breaker back to uh, an operating stage. So moving around this way, there's another 100 amp breaker that feeds off of this. Um, so this, this breaker here is connected directly to the power pack, so the actual battery pack down below. So it, that feed comes up into here, the juice comes across, and it comes down into this solenoid. I have a solenoid on the bottom which runs my switch out front. So when I turn my switch on, I get my main power because I need to run high amperage. I couldn't do that through my switch. The switch couldn't handle the amount of amperage I want to stick through it, so I used a 12-volt a um, just an automotive solenoid. Uh, this one I think is rated at 100 amps or 150 amps. From here we run power into this 100 amp breaker which does the same thing. You'll notice when I kick that breaker it turned off my main power and I turn it back on and my thermostat came back. So that allows me to have power here and I just did that for redundancy on protecting my electronics to make sure that my charging controller and my thermostat and the inverter does not run off of this. This only runs off of the 150 amp, and so only my smaller electronics that I have in here run off of this 100 amp. This then feeds into this fuse box, and this is where I do have fuses, and so the fuses, each one of them um, would feed a different function within the unit itself. 
So there's layers of redundancy to break it down so that if I overheat something or short circuit it, you know, it'll either break here or here or ultimately here and keeps me from getting shocked. That's the last thing I want. The next thing I want to show you is, uh, it's kind of fun, I put in LED lighting. So this is all LED lighting throughout the case. Let me turn the lights off and you can see it. And it kind of brings the batteries out on the bottom of the cells. And I even have lighting inside of my thermostat, which is probably unneeded, but it was fun to do anyways. So that's the LED lighting. Um, I have a, a block here that allows me to tie all my wires together just to kind of keep my wire management a lot cleaner and just distribute the power a little more effectively. So here's my cable for my 110. So this is just a standard like a computer outlet plug and that would plug into the back and I can run that to the wall and I will plug this in here in a minute so you can see uh, what happens when I kick on my charging unit. So next I want to show you is in here I have these these are my leads to the 110 outlets out front and they just come right out of the inverter. The inverter main switch on the front when I kick it in there's no fan noise as it should be. It's really a nice inverter. I've really liked this inverter. I'm going to show you how the fans kick on. Right now this is probably uh, flickering. Let me turn this lights off here. It's probably flickering in the camera but it's set at 29C which is about I think 87 degrees Fahrenheit and it's currently 22 in here and this is set for a low of 22. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this down to 22 so you can hear the fans kick in. So once this settles in, the fans will kick on. Oh, i got to turn this down as well. And I think one more. There. So now I have both of my fans running. There's two fans. But that fan blows in that direction, so all the airflow comes across this way and goes out. The reason I did that was because the inverter draws through the front, through the inverter, and the fan in the back blows out. So this one down here is blowing into the box, and this one over here is taking that warm air out. So it, there's a draw, a cross draw across the, uh, the unit. If I turn this back up, once it reaches the temperature, the desired temperature I want it to run at, it should shut the fans off and not consume any more electricity. All right, with that, I think what I'll do is I'll turn on my charging unit so you can see the charging unit. And then I'm gonna actually disassemble this so you can see down inside to see the cells. All right, so here is the charge unit, the charging controller. All this is is a buck converter. I'll show you here in a minute, but down below I have a uh, power supply that came from a Mac Mini, an Apple Mac Mini. It was an older one that I had years ago and it no longer worked, And but I had the power unit for it and so it has, um, it actually runs at 18 volts and I have a 12 volt pack so what I did is I wired it in to the case and then I used this buck converter to step it down to 12 volts for my battery pack. Now the, the charging doesn't take place until I turn on the switch in the front, so on the far left so when I kick that on, this converter um, actually shows the voltage right now in the case at 11.85. So we're above nominal. Um, it's not a full charge, but it's not, it's not even halfway. So we're actually doing pretty good there. And when I switch on that power switch in the back, so you'll notice that I have 18.5657 volts that's coming in from that power supply. And it is charging currently at 11.95 volts because that's what I have it set to up here. And I've also set this unit to only push 15 amps at a time. It's currently loading in at about 1.68 amps. It's not pushing a lot of amperage, which is equivalent to 20 watts. So 20 watts of power is being fed into the cells. The unit itself is that actually does the charging is underneath the inverter on the plexiglass. All right, so now what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to shut it all down and open up the case. I'm going to actually take the plexiglass out, take the inverter off, so you can see down into my cells and see what's down inside. Now I've got the inverter all torn out and the plexiglass is gone. You can kind of get uh, a better feel for what's inside. 
Again, I have 240 18650 cells. These have all been tested. They're all rated at around, it's an average of about 2.2 amp hours per cell, or 2200 milliamps. These uh, leads here are for battery balancing. That's what ties into this circuitry here. I can put a battery balancer on here and check my cells to make sure that across my packs they're balanced correctly. Um, there's some charging wires here. This here ties into that buck converter which allows the feed directly into the cells from here, feeding it at 12 volts. If I wanted to break it down and feed each cell bank, I could do that separately by using each of these here, but I just feed the 12 right now, which is sufficient for what I want to do. All right, um, this is that Apple unit, and it's Velcroed in, so it, it is removable, so if I need to do maintenance or work, I can pull that out. The cells are strapped in with, uh, the strapping is actually bolted to the bottom, so it's not gonna shift and cause uh, issues. Other than that, I just wanted to show you the cells themselves and that there's other things in here. All of these wires here, these XT60s tie into the plexiglass, which feeds power for the fans, feeds power in and out of the um, thermostat and the charging unit. So that's uh, what this mess is here. This white wire is the actual switch wire for the inverter. They use a RJ11. So they use this RJ11, but I think there's actually, it, they, there's a crossover, so they roll it between the two. And it was kind of a pain to figure that out, and I had to actually shorten the cable, because the one they gave me was like 21 feet. It was long, and I, it was way too much, so I had to make it a little bit shorter. My negative pole in my cells is here, my positive's over here, so it feeds directly into this switch. So one of the other things I do is my switches here in the front, they don't actually run things directly. Everything's run through automotive relays. So I have these relay switches down here because they can actually run more amperage than my switches can, can bear. So I use these automotive relays to kick in um, a lot of the functionality to turn things on and off. Other than that, that is what I've done to build out this portable power pack. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video I just produced. Uh, I have to say it is a hard thing, uh, putting yourself out there and just talking, having a conversation with a, a lens and hoping that uh, people are actually watching you and knowing that people are watching you is kind of a little nerve wracking. But uh, if you like what you've seen today, please subscribe below and I will be leaving um, links to other videos right in here. I'll just leave an itemized list of all the parts below. And you can also find all the details on frankbrand.com. So with that, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.